Fargo is back this week with episode 4 of season 5, which developed the plot forward in a way which only moved us forward a couple of miles, not the full stretch. There was still a lot of mystery and many questions which were left following the conclusion. More questions about Ola and his origin and identity, Roy Tillman and his plans for the future, plus Olmsted and her connection to Lorraine's debt company. With a closing scene as strong as its opening, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this episode. So let's get into it. Here is Fargo Season 5 Episode 4 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. That opening scene and its importance. One would be a fool to not see that the opening scene of this episode was heavily inspired by the movie Home Alone. It was as animated as what the movie was in terms of its eccentric traps which were intended to subdue the intruders. It was kind of that but blended with a haunted house with the Halloween theme and I quite liked it. It was a great way to kick off the episode considering that the end of episode 3 was left on a massive cliffhanger with Gator arriving there. This opening scene was pretty much what laid down the foundations of the episode for Dorothy and for more suspicions to be thrown her way. During the encounter, we saw that she managed to escape unscathed and even had a brief conversation with Gator when he unveiled his mask, something which I thought was actually a nice feature as the short moments of recognition of how much somebody has grown which is often apparent in family reunions when you don't see them for a while was featured here. Albeit if not verbally recognized, she was almost disappointed with the way that Gator had turned out. This altercation of the break-in resulted in the house going up in flames and Wayne getting electrocuted by the booby trap which was around the windows. This is where I feel we saw a different side to the character Dorothy. A side which showed that she's prepared to manipulate the people that she cares about most in order to save her own skin. She was the reason that Wayne was in hospital, the house was burned to the ground and his life was thrown upside down. Yet she was still trying to make him go along with the story whilst he was in a delirious state and she had no regard for telling him the truth. Something which was most apparent when he woke up and said, Nadine, and she said no. I liked the character to start with, but I feel the selfish nature of her is something that's becoming more prominent. The people she's with and trying to protect have a right to know what's putting them in danger, and I feel once Wayne gets out of the state where he's just pretty much laughing and uttering one word, he'll realize that the lack of honesty and also what he witnessed unfold is something that he won't be able to live with as well as Dorothy being found out by Wayne when he heard the name Nadine. We also saw that the officers got a hold of the footage of Dorothy in the gas station where the showdown between her and Ola occurred, yet she was still denying that it was her. Dorothy is avoiding the past and pretending that it doesn't exist, whereas Roy Tillman is chasing down that past and trying to ensure that it does, so the polar opposites are unfolding and only one will be able to reign supreme. There was one other revelation that was connected to Dorothy in this episode, and this was that her prints were recognized on the system for the FBI agents, which now most likely means that they'll be heading towards Dorothy and speaking with her as well, as they're looking to find all that they can to expose Roy Tillman and get him taken down, rather than just hoping that he loses the election and his reign fizzles out, something that I don't think would happen anyway. Roy There was an interesting moment in this episode where we saw Roy praying and saying how he once broke into a house and saw an individual called Old Baylor Mays, somebody who'd killed his wife and children, and upon breaking into the house, he saw that Baylor was sitting there with not a care in the world, but alongside him was Beelzebub sitting in the corner whispering in the man's ear and telling him what to do. Roy felt as though he was protected in that moment, and he wanted the Lord to be on his side now in what he felt was his hour of need. I wonder if this is Roy praying to the Lord with the intention of him hoping that he'll be forgiven for the sins that he's going to be committing and the murders that he's going to be carrying out and looking for exemption from judgment. Or if he's looking for the Lord's protection over the threat which is Ole Monk, as after all, he did break into his house covered in blood and placed a symbol on the wall. Roy quite literally has threats in all corners of his life right now. The FBI are on his case. Ole wants to get him, he has the election, and I imagine Dorothy will become a threat eventually too. So his prayer makes sense because he's quite literally in his hour of need. The FBI were also onto Roy's case with regards to the arms that have gone missing. We heard in the previous episode that he was supplying his father-in-law with arms, as he said that he wanted to take the country back. So that's also another thing that has raised suspicions around him. The final part in this episode was focused on Roy going to Joshua's house, the person who was abusive towards his wife in the previous episodes. Roy did say that he would return to see if he had become a better man following their encounter. However, after seeing the woman's wrist and the bruises that were on it, he knew that he wasn't a changed man. 
With Officer Witt being killed by Ola in the previous episode and leaving a threat to Roy, in order to get the higher authorities to steer clear from investigating the officer's death further, he killed Joshua because he deemed him to be a waste of space and, in his words, a waste of skin. So he felt as though he could frame him for the murder of the officer, showing just how much of a corrupt individual Roy actually is. He offered to keep Joshua's wife in his pocket by paying her to go along with his story, so it showed that there was no stopping the corruption and cover-ups. The situation with Ola and Nadine has gotten far more out of control than he could have ever possibly imagined, and he's finding himself in deeper and deeper water, and I think he's feeling it. We saw that he was feeling it because right at the end, the episode concluded with us seeing him going out for a ride and clearing his head, showing that he was feeling vulnerable at that moment. One particularly interesting revelation about Roy in this episode is that he has three wives, and two of them had gone missing. We know that he has a wife at home who is the mother to his twins. He has Nadine, who accounts for one of the missing wives. But that means there's a mysterious one, and the only glimpse that we've had is of the photo on the wall in last week's episode. So it makes me wonder what happened to her, if she ran away like Nadine or if she ended up being killed. We saw that Roy inflicts fear into his partners as we saw with his current wife, so that could be a reason as to why Nadine ran away. So I'm sure we'll hear more about his missing wife as the episodes go on, and it will become another problem for Roy Tillman to have to face. Personally, I think she's dead. Ola Monk's Confusing Section Ola Monk had a small feature in this week's episode, and it did nothing more than make me question more about his origin and identity. One of the more interesting parts of this episode was when India asked if there was any footage of the perb, and she was met with a response which said, Ghosts don't appear in photographs. A line which was deliberately placed there to make us question the very state of Ola and his mysterious nature. The one scene that we had with him was him in the bathtub covered in blood from the ritual that he carried out, and he was talking in third person about when Monk was a boy. He was talking about how freedom was a potato, and it was not being killed that day. He said freedom from hunger and the rusty blade was what survival was. And to free himself, he ate first so others could not, and he killed first before he was killed. He said that he wanted nothing more because only kings had the freedom to want. This very much feels like it's something that's connected to the flashback from hundreds of years ago that was in the last episode. It kind of summed up his lifestyle back then. The person that we saw in the flashback was a sin eater and considered to be a poor individual that was shunned from society. So that seems like the type of life that one would live back then considering the circumstances. The next part of his speech very much felt like it was directed towards the present day and the way that Roy Tillman treated him when he didn't pay him for the work that he did and the fact that he tried to have him killed. He said, everywhere you look now, there are kings. Everything they want, they call their own. And if they cannot have it, they say that they're not free. They even pretend that their freedom should be free, that it has no cost, but the cost is always death. I think this is not only representative of Roy's betrayal of the deal, but also the situation that Roy finds himself in with regards to him looking to get Nadine back, because he believes that she is his. Ola is proving to be a really interesting character, and one that I'm looking forward to seeing more of in the coming episodes. Overall Review I thought this was a good episode of the show. I'm really enjoying the dark tone to this season and the second-guessing nature that it feels like we're having to do. Right now, I genuinely have no clue which direction the story's going to go in, and that's something that I like. The episode finished as strongly as it started, and I like that they made a conscious effort to do that. Two parallel scenes taking place on different sides, one following the victim and the other following the antagonist. I like the fact that this show has 10 episodes as well. Not many shows do now, and it feels like this is going to need all 10 of them in order to get the weight of the story across. So bring on the next episode. What did you think of this episode? Comment your thoughts below, and also don't forget to subscribe. See ya.